Hello, my name is Kurt Kozer. I'm going to show you how I set up my customers to use CorelDRAW on their Laser Pro Laser Engraver. We'll start off by doing the most important thing first, which is color management. Color management needs to be turned off. So we're going to go to default settings, go to color management off, select that, and then once we have it selected, we'll go ahead and click OK. With that done, we'll go ahead and change the paper size. I'm going to set this up for a, a Laser Pro Explorer model. Right now it's a, a letter size. We'll change that to a 32 by 20. Happens to be working over the Laser Pro Explorer. We can make that a 38 by 20 or any other size you wish. But for right now, we'll use a 32 by 20. Our origin is at the bottom left. I want to make it the top left. So we'll go to Tools, Options. We're going to choose Document. Open that up. By opening that up, we have more choices. I'm going to select Rulers. Under rulers, we can change the vertical to our paper size, which in this case is 20 inches vertically. So we type in a 20 and press OK. OK, now our origin is the top left hand corner. Zero zero to the top. That's where we want it. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get some other items set up. For now, text. So we put in the text mode or get in the text tool turned on. Our font is avant garde 24 point kind of random, so we're going to go ahead and pick something that we want to use. We can scroll through and see our fonts. Um, however, I know I want to use Times Roman, so I'm going to hit the letter T, which will bring me down into my T's, and then scroll down and find the specific font, in this case, Times New Roman. I'm going to select that. I'm going to make that for artistic text. I don't use paragraph text often, so let's hit OK. All right, now we have Times New Roman. I'm going to go to my justification, and I use center most often. Center just becomes a default setting. Again, same thing, artistic text, and OK. Justification can be changed at will. This has bold, italic, or underline can be. But we're setting our defaults. 24 points fine. Let's go ahead and put bold on again just to show you how to do it. Same way, artistic text. Hit OK. Now, you have the text mode by hitting the pick tool. I'm going to go down to the quill or the outline tool. I'm going to hit that and I'll select the outline tool again. Get into the setup dialog for this. I'm going to change this for graphics, in other words, rectangles and circles and whatnot. Hit OK. First, we'll change the color from black to red, because when we vector, we want to have a unique color other than text, which is black. I don't like points. I like to use inches. And to make sure of vectors, I'm going to change it from a hairline to a point zero zero one, so I know exactly that this will be a vector. Hit OK. OK. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move on to get some uh, color set up, as long as we're talk about red and other colors. So. We'll go ahead and put an object on the screen just so we can quickly go look at how the printer works. The printer in this case being the Explorer model, so we'll hit Explore and choose Properties. Once we're in Properties, I'm going to go ahead and choose Pen. Pen is the place we have our power settings. And these are the colors we use, black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, and others. The others are, we have 16 colors, but we don't really need that many colors typically, so we'll just set the first seven. So hit OK. We now know the sequence of colors, we'll hit Cancel. Now we're going to go ahead and drag the colors up. I delete the box because I no longer need it. I'm going to grab the red. I'm going to drag the red up and put it where the blue is, or the color immediately after white. Get the green, bring it up. Whoops. Try again. There we go. Okay, now we'll grab the yellow. Move the yellow up. Whoops, one more time. There we go. So now we have the blue. Magenta, cyan, so you have the shades of grays or blacks, we have white, we have red, we have green, we have yellow, we have blue, magenta, cyan. First seven colors are taken care of. All right. Now, I like to use different shortcut keys, so I'm going to show you how to set up the shortcut keys I like to use. You can set up any shortcut keys in any way you want. This is how you do it. Went to customization. Within customization, I customize commands. Under Commands, I'm going to choose File, Print, and actually what I want to do is change the shortcut key. Of course, I want to shortcut keys. Currently, it's Control-P. Well, I'm going to click in the new shortcut key and hold the Alt key down and hit the letter P. Now, if I hit Assign to put Alt-P in, it's not going to replace Control-P. It's going to be added to. So by modifying the shortcuts, you still have all the default CorelDRAW shortcuts, but you have your own as well. All right, now we'll move on and we'll go to Edit. Under Edit, I like to go to select all, and we use objects in this case, so I like to use. And I'm going to make my shortcut key F6. F6 is currently assigned to rectangle, but eh, I don't use the rectangles often enough to need a shortcut key for them. So now it's F6 for rectangles. 
Okay, at this point, we're going to go ahead and go to Arrange. Under Arrange, I use Align and Distribute at different times, so I'm going to choose that. I want to make that F7. If I use F7 here, of course, it's used for something else. It's called an ellipse. Well, same thing. If I want an ellipse, I'll go to my toolbar and grab one. All right, moving on. We're going to change to View. And under View, I'm going to want to both zoom up to my paper size when I'm zoomed in or out too far. Occasionally, I want to go back to my paper size, so I like to use that, and I use the zoom to width function. And zoom to width will change to F5. And again, F5 is a sign, it's a freehand, same difference. Don't want to use it, I want it to be a, my zoom function, so now I have hit assigned. All right, uh, we can put other shortcut keys in there, but that gets us started and at least shows you how to do it. Now, another thing we can do is we can customize a toolbar. So I go to General, and in the toolbar we can drag icons up. We can pick any icon from the list we wish that we find that we use more often. I can go ahead and I can change the view here. And I'm going to go to my Arrange and select Distribute Spacing and Vertical. I'm going to drag this off of this to my desktop. Now, it just happened to go off my page, so I can drag it back on here. Now it's there. I want to add to this. And by selecting any other icon I wish, in this case, let's go ahead and Distribute Spacing and Horizontal, and put that and drop it inside of there so now we have the both of them and we can make as many of these as we wish but that's enough to show you how to do it if you drag it up to the top it will dock and now you have your new choices so again you can customize this to the shortcuts or the icons you use most frequently feel free to change these at will that anything you do can be saved or modified later okay go to range transformation I'm going to choose position even will do just gets it docked my paper doesn't fit anymore, so I'm going to press F5. F5, if you recall, is zoom to width, so now we redraw it based on our new paper size or our screen desktop size. Go to Tools. Under Tools, I'm going to choose Options. I want to save these settings. So, what I'm going to do is go down to Document and put a check mark for Save Options as Default for New Document. Hit OK. This will save what we've just done as a new default. Corraldo has a choice for this too, but I find it to be unreliable. It doesn't seem to save everything, so I don't use save settings as default as a menu. In any event, this is what I do to get my CorelDRAW set up. You can modify this to work the way you like. Right now, let's see if everything worked properly. So I went to a new, and yes, my paper size is right. My origin is correct. We got a 32 by 20, 00. zero. So it looks like we did what we wanted. Let's just check everything else. I'll put some text on here. It should be Times New Roman bold. Center justified, so let's get something typed in here. It's a little small to see, so we'll go ahead and get something typed in and we'll zoom up. I'm going to hit the F2 key, which is just a max all. I'm sorry, the F4 key, which is a max all. There we go, this is center text. Now, I hit F5, zoom to paper, and drag a rectangle, see what the color is. It's a red rectangle, or at least a red vector rectangle, 0 0.001 inches. So it looks like the settings we, we tried to save were saved. We're done.